this was not the video I had planned to make today. This is not the video I'd planned to make today. I had planned to show you the beautiful fence that Dave had built me for the cottage garden. He tried to do it when I was picking up one of the kids and he thought he would be able to get it done in time, but it took him like three times the amount of time. It's magical here. I'll, I'll put that in right now and show you. It's so, so beautiful. I'll have to change the garden design just a tiny bit inside of it, but not just yeah. these front things. I, uh, I was going to say, I might have put it a little bit closer. No, 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 no. I love it, honey. It's so perfect. I love how it swoops like that, like it, like a wave. Yeah. It makes it so interesting. Thank you. I love it. Good. I love it. Uh, and then we did, you know, we did, there was some sad things that happened. Like the spring onions are getting eaten by the bunnies. My heirloom painted runner beans are being eaten by the bunnies, but I did some quick changes and I'm like, okay, well I can move these and I can, you know, I'll put the runner beans over on a fence in the fenced garden. And so it was all very manageable things that went wrong. And then Dave and I, I've been, I was weeding all morning. I started weeding around 7 a.m. because the video I was going to make today was a mid-June garden tour so that you could see how amazing everything looks right now. It's just like, this is when Dave and I think it's just like perfect because nothing's gone like too crazy or exploded. There's very little maintenance to do other than weeding. I think it took me about three hours to weed almost all of the garden and because I manage the weeds on a day-to-day -day basis it's never terrible 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 so we were in there and he was kind of attending to the section where I had not done any weeding and I was looking at my garlic through the fence because the garlic is in the garden bed. It's the beds that are outside that was actually the first part of our garden I was going to talk about that in today's video too and I noticed, so I, I took the scapes, I think I took the scapes like four or five days ago. And I noticed that, I, and everything was fine then. Everything was beautiful. It's the most, I thought it was the most beautiful garlic I'd ever grown. So then, as soon as the scapes had come off, I did notice like the plants just seemed a little off after that and I thought well could there be something wrong with it did I do the scapes wrong like I was just I was just kind of you know curious but I thought okay this is fine maybe they're just gonna bulb up early and dry out early we've had really weird weather inconsistent weather but I see this one garlic and it looks like it's kind of falling over and it's brown yellow brown like the whole thing and that's not how garlic starts to die back when it's bulbing up. You will get the, some of the leaves will start at the bottom to start becoming brown and people usually wait for about three levels of leaves before they then pull their garlic because if you've let those leaves kind of dry out, that means you'll be able to store your garlic for longer. You don't wanna pull it prematurely, but you also don't wanna leave it too long. So it's this kind of like fine line and you kind of learn when that time is. So I'm going, okay, that's not right. So I go over and I, I just kind of wiggle it and the whole top pops off. And then I have to go in with a shovel and dig out the bulb. And the bulb is just not, nothing's good about this. And then I look and I find another one. And then I find another one. And then I look at the base of all of them and they all have this brown with some black spots. Now I have seen videos of people who deal with white rot and have to harvest their garlic early every year, never are able to get a bulb and end up um, taking young, the young garlic and just you know getting it as far as they can and then chopping it and freezing it. So 
that is what has happened. So basically this is a fungus. It's called sclerotic, sclerotic. It's a fungus and it presents as a little black like bead and it's present in the soil and um, it's present on the garlic itself on the plant. And it can come through, you can put it through, if you, you plant garlic that has been exposed to it, it could have come from the compost that we ordered, which I won't really know if that's the case until I notice other places that we've used the compost to see if anything happens to our onions. Um, most likely it's infected garlic that was put into these beds. So basically the, this sclerotic, the sclerotica fungus has like a sweet spot of temperature where it kind of is happy. It will die off at around 113 degrees. My neighbor just walked by with a brand new puppy and I had to go run and say hi to it. So I have no idea what I was talking about. The fungus, where it came from. So basically, had I not noticed this and let it go for a few days, I could have been in real trouble. Now ideally you want to harvest your garlic so that you can store your garlic for as much of the year. You typically get about six to eight months um, before it starts to go bad and then you preserve it in other ways. When you're dealing with white rot, if you can pull it before the disease spreads too far, you have a pretty young head of garlic, which you can then chop up. There's no like little papery bits or anything. You just remove that center stalk, you chop them up, and I'm just gonna put them in the freezer. So there's a lot of garlic. So I'm going to stink like garlic for the next couple days. So I am going to remove each of the garlic. I'm gonna take everything in a box so that I can burn the box over to the fire pit. I am going to use my knife and take off the tops and take off the roots and put all that in the fire pit. And then I'll be taking the bulbs inside to, to preserve and I'll deal with that. Probably I'll do it in steps. So I'll do one thing today and then the next tomorrow. So uh, this does not really go away. There are ways you can kill it, but mostly this will live in the soil for decades. So it means that no garlic, no allium, no onions, no shallots will go in these garden beds. The silver lining is that I had planned to actually put the, gar the garlic in the big garden this year, and I changed my mind at the very last minute. So I am incredibly thankful that I did that. Um, I knew that I was taking somewhat of a chance. I was using organic garlic from our local farmer's market, who I trust incredibly. However, most likely because it wasn't certified seed garlic, that's where it came from. So either from there or from the compost that we bought also locally, which I was super suspicious of. I don't think it was great compost, but time will tell on that. Luckily, it was all contained in this one area. Now, they do say that if you lay like a transparent plastic over the soil where this scler sclerotic fungus has been, and you can get it above 113 degrees Fahrenheit, that you can kill it. So we do have that option of laying plastic, just to be safe, I'll ne I won't plant garlic back there. Um, the other silver lining is I've been wanting to make some little secret garden beds. How do I show that to you? Like way, way back there. That was ridiculous. Way back there along the fence. And so now this is like a kind of an opportunity to be able to expand. I wanted to make a corn bed and a garden and like onions or whatever rabbits won't eat back there. Um, I think rabbits will eat corn though. Anyway. I wanted to expand, which I think gardeners just do. They just want to expand. So there's a silver lining there. I was really sad when this happened. I was really upset. I was near tears. This is going to be a lot of work when normally you just pull the garlic, lay it down on something to dry, and then you have storage garlic and that's it. Like that's all you do. And so this is going to be a couple of days worth of work. So I'll get everything out of there 
and then we'll kind of decide what we're gonna do with that garden box. We can plant other things in it, so it's not a big deal. The soil is not ruined for other vegetables. It's basically ruined for garlic, for alliums. My hope is that this is not going to spread, like the soil won't be spilling out of the boxes and like spreading into my garden because that would suck, of course. But then, you know, you figure it out. Then we would contain all of our alliums in a totally separate spot. So I, I do feel like this is manageable. I was heartbroken when I discovered this and I looked at every single garlic that just like a handful of days ago was so beautiful, so beautiful. That is the heartbreak in the garden. And we feel we gotta feel sad about it. I mean, it's disappointing when you are growing your food for the year. We like this is it. Like you rely on this, and so I will be able to get some storage garlic from the farmers market as I did. I won't be using it as seed in the future. Um, and again, these are these are calculated risks. I knew this was possible. I knew when I used, um, you know, seed potatoes that came from organic sources and the garlic that came from organic sources but were not certified as seed potatoes, that I was taking a risk. It's a calculated risk and it happens. It can happen even if you bought seed potatoes, it could come from soil that you brought in. So it is one of those things that people deal with when they are growing these, uh, when they're growing alliums. Monty has it in his garden. He talks about it a lot. I believe he grows a lot of elephant garlic because I think elephant garlic isn't as affected by it, but I'll have to double check that. I just remember that from an episode. Um, I remember him saying something about elephant garlic. Um, so he never plants garlic in that spot again, but can it spread? I, I don't think it's gonna spread through the air, but what I'm being really careful of, and the reason I'm using a box, is because I initially put those few garlics into a basket and now I'm gonna have to sanitize that basket. I have to sanitize anything that touches the trowel that I'm using to dig them, the knife I'm using to cut them, anything they touch gets sanitized and then we'll burn the whole lot way back there in our fire pit um, and we'll burn the box. So I'm hoping it won't spread any other way but I'm sure as I kind of move around it's gonna be, you know, plopping down and I just don't want it to get into the main garden so that's what i'm being really careful about right now because i have a lot of onions planted there now if my onions develop white rot then i will know it came from the compost and that is a shame because that will pretty much mean that that entire garden space will no longer be appropriate for any alliums and again we'll just make a new space we will figure it out so it is you know it all there's always ways to work around it but this would be much more heartbreaking if i did not have more land to put more to to use for these plants if i only had a small space and i think probably i would not have been as um like again i said this is a calculated risk i know what i'm doing when i plant non-certified garlic into the ground i know what i'm doing i'm taking a calculated risk and I lost, I lost. So, so today we'll be digging up and at least getting it cleaned up. And um, even if I don't get it cut today, just peeling those outside layers off and then getting it, um, you know, ready to be preserved. But let's go over and check it out. It's sunny, so I'm not sure if I'll get great video right now, but we'll try. So originally we thought it might not be in this garden, but I do believe in this garden box, but I believe it is in this garden box too. So I think it's in all three of the garden boxes. So let's just come down here. All right, let's see. So basically I kind of noticed a bunch of them were in here. And so I just started to dig them out. So I just take my trowel and I've just been popping it trying to pop it out. This one is not one of the bad ones. I think I already got rid of the bad ones. So this one doesn't look too bad at all. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, 
Okay, so we'll come over here in the shade. So this is really just like, it's a calculated risk right now. If I leave this in, this could all become really soft and rot. I could certainly wait a couple days on some of them that look a little better, like some of them like this, just to see if I could get them a little farther. Um, but again, I just don't know if the risk is worth it. This is the garlic before all of this has dried to create those beautiful like kind of papery wrappers that the garlic gets and it doesn't quite have cloves yet i mean they're in there but they're not very distinct so like i said this one wasn't too bad let's see if i can find another one smells like garlic looking for a bad bad one well I mean you can see you can see this right here this is one and see how I just was able to pull it off like that that's basically when it's become really bad so that has to go that'll get burned um, yeah I can't find another bad one I I was so upset when this was happening I was I pulled all of the ones that were really really troubling um, and then the other thing you'll notice is they start to fall over so this one like they just start to kind of lean I don't want to put this trowel in this bed yet in case oh yeah I do see it hold on so they're they are they're starting to lean Back to the shade again. These so still not looking terrible, but there's just this wetness here, and there's no reason for it to be wet. There's no rain. Yeah, so it's a tough call. I could let them go for a couple days. Maybe I'll just let them sit tonight. I really think I'm gonna end up pulling these. Um, I just talk this stuff through with you guys on video and try to figure things out together. It seems like when you're listening to me, I have a better time figuring out. Maybe what I'll do is I'll post the video and get this posted like ASAP and just see what some of you think, what your thoughts are. All right. But the bright spot to the day is definitely this fence. Dave did such a good job on it. Yeah, I just adore it. All right, well, some time has passed. Some time has passed and I've had some time to think about it, do some more research. And just based on the state of all the garlic that's left in there, I don't feel an urgency to pull them today. And I just couldn't fathom doing that. I can't find anything online that says how long from the time you see some of them have it to how long they all may have it. So that's something that I need to figure out and work out. Um, so I'll just keep doing some research, see if I can find anybody maybe on YouTube that, that talks about that. And if not, I will be the science experiment for it and figure it out and I'll just watch it like a hawk. Like I will keep my eyes on it tight. Did my dog just run away? Um, okay. So I would appreciate anything you have to share with me except for I told you so. I told you so, not really don't really need that one. I knew, I knew there was a risk planting it. So I, you know, that's not going to be helpful. Um, but if you have any experience with this, if you've had white rot or any other fungal disease, because I could be diagnosing this wrong, I would love to hear about it. Or if you haven't dealt with this and you're just thinking, Oh, what should Hannah do? I would love to hear that too. Give me some advice. Um, I just appreciate this space so much because I, I feel like I don't have to show up knowing the answers that I can show up in it. 
and say that. Like, I'm not sure what to do, but I want you to know this thing exists and it's something for us to think about. But beyond that, even if you're not growing garlic or onions or have this to worry about, that things go wrong and our heart will feel a little broken and then we get back up and we figure it out. Right now, I'm using this time, instead of digging up all my garlic, uh, it's about 6.30 at night, I'm gonna go dig up those, the rest of the runner beans that were supposed to grow above on that beautiful arch in the potager garden. And I'm going to probably end up replacing them with firecracker vine and clematis, which was my plan B. I had a plan B. I knew it was very possible that the rabbits were gonna eat those, but they're super precious to me. They were very hard beans to find. So I'm gonna move them into the area where we have a fence, get them growing up along the fence, and, um, and it will be beautiful. So when there's disappointment, I suggest always that we feel it. We don't try to pretend that it's not there. When we feel heartbreak, let yourself feel it, and then find the silver linings, find the beauty inside of it. So this is a gift of learning, this is a gift of growth, um, and that's really what gardening is. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you.